Hey name Roots family, how are you? Hoping that you are well today. So coming up, we have a time of prayer. We have a brilliant talk um, by Emmanuel on prayer. We have some sung worship as well. But first off, we're going to start with some creative worship. Now this is our time to really connect with God. For this, we will need some pens. It can be felt tips or pencil or anything. We'll need our Bible, whether an app as well is fine, some paper or a notebook, and more importantly, our imagination. We want to really encourage you to be creative this week. Um, so we're going to be looking at Psalm 61 verse 4. That's Psalm 61 and verse 4. Psalm 61 verse 4 says, I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. I don't know if you're a visual person, but for me, I just love the picture of this tent that you're dwelling in, feeling safe with God, or God as your refuge, or this shelter, or wings. So if over the um, sung worship, um, grab your pen and your paper, and take the time to draw. What does shelter look like for you? What do God's wings feel like for you? What does it look like to dwell in God's tent forever? Use your imagination and draw whatever feels um, like God to you.
mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't keep down, I won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Transform through 
was your time of creative worship? I drew a picture of a wing around this scripture. I love this idea of taking refuge in the shelter of God's wings. I hope for you that that was a time to really draw close to God, to realise and know and see his goodness. Let's go into a time of prayer now. First off, we're going to pray for Mahida and Hannah, who are our compassion children, who we sponsor, and the money we raise goes for their schooling, it goes for all their medical care. They live in countries where, unlike here, we, they can't just pop down to the hospital. It really costs a lot of money. So why don't you take your time to pray for them, pray for their families, pray for God's protection over them, because they're also in lockdown and quarantine. For our second time of prayer, we're going to pray against homelessness in the UK. When lockdown happened, those of those who were homeless were given places in hotels, but it still meant that they didn't have food. As lockdown eases, homelessness is still very real. Let's pray big and bold prayers. Let's pray for the end of homelessness, that no one ever has to sleep on the streets again. Pray for wisdom for those in our local council and in government who make these decisions. And for our final prayer, I want us to pray about friendships. Friends are so important for us. They encourage us, they support us, they help bring the best out in us. They're really good for our mental health. Pray for all those people who feel really sad being away from their friends. Pray for those who feel lonely like they don't have any friends. Some of you are going to uni, some of you are moving up a year, some of you are even changing schools. Let's pray that this coming year will be a time when you have really amazing friendships. Friendships that bring you closer to God. Friendships that encourage and empower you. Amen. So Emmanuel is here and he is one of our amazing youth leaders. He has been volunteering with us for so long. He has so much wisdom and he's going to be speaking to you about the spiritual discipline of prayer. Get ready to hear some amazing wisdom on prayer. I'm going to pray for Emmanuel. Father, I thank you so much for Emmanuel. I thank you for the words that you've put on his heart to speak to us, Lord. I thank you for the gift that you've given him for teaching. I pray that you bless his time teaching us. Make all our hearts, ears and eyes sensitive to what it is that you want us. Bless this time that we have together. Thank you, God. Amen. Over to you, Emmanuel. Hi, guys. Thank you for tuning in. I am Emmanuel and I'm part of the 1130 youth team. Today, we'll be looking into prayer as part of our spiritual discipline. Um, how as a young person, you pray continually. You pray without ceasing. Um, and it's part of uh, the theme. It's an element of the theme that has been chosen for this term, which is spiritual discipline. With this term, we're looking at spiritual discipline and prayer is one of the important elements when it comes to spiritual discipline. 
So today's talk will be exploring questions like, what is prayer? Why should we pray? As a young person, why should you pray? How should you pray? When should you pray? And where should you pray? So these are some of the questions that we will be exploring today. And you will need for this talk three things. You need your Bible, you need your notebook, and you need your pen. And uh, you need these things because we'll be making references to the Bible so you can read the Bible and take up information out yourself. And whatever the Lord lays on your heart also, you can make notes so that later you can reflect on it. So this is what today's talk is about, prayer. Now, I need to ask you a question. How often do you talk to your friends? That is a question I want to pose to you. To you. How often? Is it once in a while? Is it almost never? Or all the time? This response will determine the closeness of your relationship with your friend or family member. If it's about all the time conversation, then I'll say that you are tightly close with that friend or mom, dad, or sibling, if you talk all the time. And this is the same with God. Prayer is basically talking to God on a daily basis. That is the definition of prayer. And as a young person, this term, we would like to encourage you all to talk to God on a daily basis. It's part of our spiritual discipline. That is why we are studying about prayer. But the next thing we need to look at is why should a young person like you pray? So what is the purpose of prayer? Why is it an important element of our spiritual discipline? Well, prayer helps you to develop a habit of talking to God all the time. It's not just like when you are going to have something, dinner, and you pray when you've got food. No, that's not, yes, it's good to pray over your food, but what I'm saying is that you develop that habit of praying about everything that bothers you. So as a young person, um, prayer is really important. Your daily walk with Jesus is really important that you talk to him. Also, it helps us to grow and build a character in Christ Jesus. What, are, what do I mean by this? Christ-like character is basically the trait, the characteristics of Jesus. Who is Jesus? How is Jesus like? Jesus was humble, patient, obedient, loving, forgiving. And through prayer, you begin to exhibit some of this Christ-like characteristic. You become patient. You learn how to wait on God to answer your prayers, to give you what you need. You forgive others because Jesus forgave you, forgave us because we are sinners. So you learn to forgive when someone offends you. And through prayer, through constantly talking to God, you are able to build humility. Build humility. You have become humble. So that is why, um, as a young person, we need to pray. In a sense that this world, uh, there are lots of issues facing um, you guys, young people out there this educational pressure to succeed in school is one pressure that young people face 
low self-esteem people have got issues with their body image because they always want to look good there's that pressure of materialism and by talking to God constantly it will help you to take away some of these worries that you may have so how should we pray as a young person or as a young Christian in order to develop spiritual discipline to be able to be praying constantly sometimes it becomes very daunting for some of us when they ask us to pray yes sometimes when I'm asked to pray it can be a bit daunting and you ask yourself oh you start thinking about the word but Jesus has given us the model to pray and us how, how to pray so can you grab your Bibles and turn to Matthew chapter 6 verses 9 to 13 Joel is going to read for us but I always want, also want to encourage you to read the passage yourself so that um, you make notes and I would like you there are only five verses I would like you to make notes of the things that jumps out to you what is God telling you about that passage I'll give you a minute for you to write it down the module of prayer and we will dive into it so I'll pass it on to Joel to read um, Matthew chapter 6 verses 9 to 13 This is the reading from Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 to 13. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Right, thank you. Thank you, Joel, for reading the Bible for us. And I'm also sure that you've put, you've made your own notes as to you so that when we go through it, you can add more to it. So, I need to put a bit of context to it as to why Jesus, did Jesus did say we should pray like this. And it all started in Matthew chapter 5 that's the context behind it Matthew chapter 5 and that is the introduction to the Sermon on the Mount introduction to the Sermon on the Mount and the Sermon on the Mount is basically Jesus's teachings okay Jesus's teachings and in Matthew chapter 5 I'll read verses 1 to 2 now when Jesus saw the crowds he went up on a, on a mountainside and sat down and sat down his disciples came to him and he began to teach them so what did he start teaching them he taught them a lot of things basically you see it as a, 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 a biology lesson there were topics after topics after topics as christian what we should do and shouldn't do and we need to remember that jesus was talking to the disciples and the crowd that were gathered there the crowd were made up of children adults kids people from different walks of life that is what constitutes the crowd so Jesus' teaching was not only meant for a group of people but it's meant for all of us including we young people and some of the things Jesus talk about is how to love your neighbor as yourself Okay, how to help the needy, the Beatitudes. When you read, you start reading Matthew chapter 5, Jesus was teaching, teaching, teaching. Telling the people, it's basically like 
the do's and don'ts what Christians should do and what Christians shouldn't do. That was what the mountain on uh, the sermon on the mount was all about. Then Matthew chapter 6 verse 7 this is what Jesus said when we pray we should not babble I think I hope you can let's let's all refer to that first so basically Jesus is telling us how we should not pray and he says that and when you pray do not keep on babbling like pagans do not keep repeating yourself over and over and over again for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. They think they, might, they will be heard as a result of their many words. So this is, this is straight away telling you that is not the way to pray. You see, when you're talking to your friend, you don't fake it. You are real. You don't repeat yourself over and over. You you are real. You talk about deeper issues. It's from your heart. Whatever you, you discuss with your friend or your family member is something that bothers you. And you talk about it. So Jesus, before he started, before he would, he started to tell us, teach us how to pray, before he would unveil his model of prayer, he said, we shouldn't pray like that. But this is how we should pray. So verse 9. Can you please make reference? The first one is to verse 9. Jesus was looking at pray to your father in heaven. Pray to your father in heaven. Let's read it together. It says, our father in heaven, hallowed be your name. So verse 9, there are two things there. You pray to your Father in heaven and you give thanks. Be gratitude. Show grat gratitude. Thanksgiving. Father God, I thank you for today. I thank you for my friend. I thank you for your provision provisions that you've made for me today. I thank you for the life of my mom. I thank you for healing my mom or my dad. So the model this is how jesus is saying we should pray he's saying that the first thing you need to do is to pray to your father in heaven and give thanks for what he has done for you for what god has done for you verse 10 what is verse 10 telling us let's let's pause for a moment he saying, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So basically, it's petition. You need to petition God. Yeah? Give all your worries. He's saying that give all your worries to God and telling God that God have your way in my life. That is what verse 10 is telling us that give all your worry to god so first pray to your father in heaven second give thanks to god for what he has done and the third thing is that saying is that in verse 10 is that give all your worry to god have your way in my life because god you are the creator of the heavens and earth you can do everything you can make things the the impossible situation become possible so have your way in my life. So they say that petition God. That is what verse 10 is saying. Let's move on to verse 11. Present your needs to God. Again, petition. So we've looked at thanksgiving, praying to your Father in heaven. The second element is about petition. Petition again. So lots of requests. You can tell God all your problems. That is what Jesus is teaching the crowd. This is what Jesus is tell telling young people today. That give all your worries to me. I will deal with it. That is why we need to pray. So this is the model that we have to follow. 
Present your needs. Verse 11 is telling us to present our needs to God. Lord, I need you to help me succeed in my education. Lord, I need you I need you to help me overcome these anxiety issues. Lord, you know I'm struggling. Present your problems to God. That is how we should pray. That's what Jesus is telling us today. Verse 12. Verse 12 has got two elements. The first one is about confession. Let's see. It says, forgive us our debts. So we are acknowledging that God is the only one that can remove our sins. And what God is telling us, Jesus is telling us today, is that we should say, sorry. I am sorry for being part of of um, people misbehaving I should have told I should have I should have asked them to stop I'm really sorry God that I did not listen to you so Jesus is saying that we should say sorry that is confession 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 of it when you've done something wrong so it helps us to remember things that we've done wrong the wrongs that we've done and we will write it down and we will pray and say god sorry about it that's simple that jesus is teaching us that is the model then 12 b part again is saying that even as we also have forgiven our debtors that's what 12 b is saying so there's that cycle of you saying to someone that oh it is your fault and the person or the other person will blame you your friend will blame you oh no it's your fault it's my fault it's your fault and there's this endless cycle of blame game and it sometimes leads to bitterness it leads to uh, resentment it leads to toxic relationship God is telling us today, Jesus has asked us that we forgive others just as our Father in heaven has forgiven us. That is one of the elements of the prayer, the model of prayer that Jesus was teaching about. And it also applies to us. Verse 13, and lead us not into temptation so again another petition here another petition the world is full of challenges for young people for us even adults full of challenges and you cannot walk out there without spiritual protection he says that and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one people might be planning bad stuff about you but when you put that petition that request before god the lord will you watch over me even as i'm going to school today would you watch over me as i'm going to visit my friend would you watch over me as i'm walking to the park would you watch over me put that request before god that is the model that jesus says we should follow so let me recap the key things here pray to your father in heaven that is what jesus is teaching us thanksgiving thank god for all that he's done followed by telling him that you are sorry confession you have to tell him you are sorry for the things that you've done that you shouldn't have then the final one Jesus is saying that petition we should make our request known to him so you see when 
you are talking with your friend you don't force the conversation it's the same thing with God when you're talking to God you're not going to force the conversation it flows naturally and to help us to be able to do that we're going to um, do a short activity I'd like you to grab a piece of paper or grab your notebook and write draw three lines yeah, you need three columns column number one is about Thanksgiving subheading give it a heading sub uh, heading of Thanksgiving another heading sorry and another heading requests which is petition those are the three things that Jesus is saying that when we pray we should focus on that's the model of Jesus prayer and what I would like you to do is that in one minute you I would like you to write down Thanksgiving what you are grateful for all the things that you are grateful for are the things that you are sorry about in the second column and anything that you want we want to put before the Lord you've got a minute to write it down and when you finish writing it down you've got another one minute to talk to God F look focusing on the things that you have written telling God how grateful you are and you pray for a minute and let's see how if it's how easy it's really easy by the things and that makes the conversation flows naturally and the more you do this as often as you do this you will draw closer to God and you begin to hear God speak to you so you've got a minute to do that Yes, so I'm sure you've um, you've enjoyed the one minute activity, that prayer activity that you've just done, praying and talking to your Father in in heaven, and that is how um, it should be. Um, I would like us to look at when when we should pray, when we should pray, and you can pray at any time where to pray it pray anywhere so for me personally um i incorporate prayer into my everyday chores so uh during lockdown i sometimes go for a walk and 
I'll start praying whilst I'm walking. When I'm doing stuff in the garden, I, I do pray. Um, in my community, uh, quite a few, two weeks ago, there was an accident in front of our house and I was praying. I was talking to God, the Lord, let nothing terrible happen to this child that was run over by a car. And they took the kid to the hospital and there was no broken bone in his body. And I was excited about it. I pray anytime, even when I'm driving to work. I pray when I'm even bathing. So you can, you see, you can pray anytime. There's no a designated place or prayer is not only for Sundays as a young person coming to church. No, you can pray wherever you find yourself in the classroom. Um, if you're struggling to concentrate or focus, always remember to pray. God is the go to go person. So, there are some few tips too I would like you to also incorporate into your prayer life. You can sing a song of praise. Sometimes I find it really, really uplifting when I'm talking to God and singing at the same time. And sometimes, as a friend, just as your friends, you need to listen. Because sometimes, God has got something to tell us. You see, he has a relationship with us. I'll share a personal experience um, about Joel. When Joel started secondary school, he went to Mill Hill County and we live in Enfield and he had to travel an hour and a half every day on public transport to get to school and another hour and a half to come back home. So that's three hours. And uh, sometimes I have to drop him in the mornings. He has to wake up around 5.30 and get ready so that we both leave home at 6.30. I kind of pray to God. I presented this um, request to God that, Lord, this can't carry on for the next five years because he gets home and he had no time to revise. So one day I drove past the school, the Latima school, and I could hear this distinctive voice, God speaking to me, telling me that this is the school. This is Joel's school, to be precise. This is Joel's school. That was in October. October half term. I was driving. I remember very well. So I was quite, I was thinking. So I came home and I spoke to my wife about it. And it's like, oh, okay. So I decided to write to the school. I wrote to the school and they told me, sorry, unfortunately, we all full up and there's no place for your son. However, we'll put your son on a waiting list. So if there is any um, place, we will let you know. Cool. So six months, six months, seven months later, I had a, I had an email from the school, not even a letter, an email from the school that um, a place has come up, but Joel will have to write an exam. I said okay, and there are sixty-five people um, who will have to sit for this exam, and there's only one place available, so it's really, really tough. But knowing that it was God who told me that that is Joel's school. I had that assurance. And I knew that I have been obedient. That is what I was talking about. Christ-like characteristics, character. Being obedient when God speaks to you. Being humble. And to cut a long story short, Joel wrote the exams. 65 student. And he got in. He got in. So, that is the story. That is what prayer does. Petition God about all the issues that you have. 
give your problems to God. And the only way you can give the prob your problems to God as a young person is to talk to him daily. Have a chat with him daily. Have a chat with God. Talk to Jesus. And give all your worries to him. Right, so to finish this um, topic on prayer, I have some few Bible verses for you. So I'd like you to write down First Thessalonians 5.17. And it says that pray continually. So as a young person, Jesus is telling us to pray continually not 24 but if there is an opportunity you pray so it has to be an intentional lifestyle that will help with your christian growth then you're familiar with this verse philippians 4 6 do not be anxious about anything but in every situation, in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. You see, request is plural. So all your problems, all everything that you need, present it to God, Father God. So, as you pray, I'd like you to remember 1 Thessalonians 5.17 as you go through this week to pray continually. And Philippians 4 is saying that do not be anxious, do not worry. God is saying, I've got you, I've got you. Don't worry, I've got you. I have better plans for you. Just present your requests. Present your request. And you can only present your request when you talk to God daily, on a daily basis. So, let me end with a prayer. Father God, I thank you for all the young people out there. I thank you for keeping them safe during this difficult time. I ask that you continue to keep them safe. May you give them peace and bless them with all the gifts and favors they need to grow and develop as fine Christians. I thank you for watching over them. I thank you for your faithfulness. Take glory, Father. Take glory, Son. Take glory, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name have I prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. So, pray continually. Pray without ceasing. Bless you.